Dr. Holt. This video is on inclined planes. I have three masses, 6 kilogram, a 3 kilogram, and a 2 kilogram. I'm going to have the coefficient of friction only be, be between the 2 and this surface initially. There's going to be no friction here or no friction here. I want to determine what the acceleration is going to be, the interaction between, two, the, uh, between the 3 and the 6, and between the 2 and the 3. What I've done here is set up an axis system. I'm going to let anything that's parallel to this system. And if it goes down, that's going to be my positive x. And then normal will be my positive y going up. What I like to do <clears throat> with these problems is I like to create the or determine what the parallel and perpendicular forces will be. So what I do is I draw another system down here of each. If this is 40 degrees, this angle here will be 40 degrees. This will be the 90. This represents perpendicular to the surface here. So I take 6 times 90.8. That is 58.8. That's coming straight down. That's the force of the gravity acting on the 6 kilogram object. So if I take 58.8 times the cosine of 40, I will get the 45.64. That represents the force as being normal to the surface. 58.8 times the sine of 40 gives me 37.8. That's the force that's going parallel down the uh, down this incline plane or being uh, a positive x. So what I'm going to do down here is I'm just going ahead and going to draw the free by diagram or the force diagram of the six kilogram object. So this would be 45.64 newtons here. That's from right here. This would be my normal, 45.64 newtons here. This would represent my 37.8 newtons here. Now the force that often gets forgotten right here is, this is the force that the 3 is going to push back on the 6. I'll go ahead and show this vector notation. Again, that's the interacting force of the 3 is pushing back on the 6. So there's your force diagram. And then like what I like to do off to the side here, I like to put 6, the mass, times acceleration in the x direction. So there is my force diagram or my free body diagram of the 6 kilogram object. Now we're going to do the same thing with the 3 kilogram object over here. We go back to the picture. I got 22.52 coming down. This would be my F normal. This is going to represent the force that the 2 is pushing on the 3. This is going to represent the force that the 6 is pushing on the 3. I'll show those as vectors here. And this would represent the 18.90 newtons. Okay, now I have a force pair here and a force pair here. Those are going to be the same magnitude but equal in opposite direction. And then also, again, what I like to do off to the side, I like to put the 3 times A of X here. Okay, so there's the free by diagram or the force diagram of the 3 kilogram object. Now we'll do the last one. Okay, now we'll draw the free by diagram of the 2 kilogram object. All right, so first thing we'll do, we're going to up here we got 15.01 coming down here this will be my force normal okay this will be now this can be a frictional force this will be the normal force times mu and mu is 0.15 so all we have to do is take this normal force 15.01 we multiply it by 0.15. That gives us 2.25. So the frictional force is going to be 2.25 newtons. All right. Now we have 12.6 coming down here. Let 
Okay, and there's one other thing I had left off of the free byte diagram, the force byte diagram. You have another force coming down this way, and that's got to be the force pair of the two three. So that'll be the force that the three is pushing onto the two. Make those vectors here and here. And then here, this is going to be 2 times the acceleration of x. So there is going to be your force diagram or your free by diagram, the 2 kilogram object. At this point, what you want to do is go ahead and start generating your equations. So I'm going to do them right over here to the side. So we can, we'll do the 6 first. So anything that goes up is going to be negative. So I got minus f of 3, 6. I'm going to drop the uh, vector notation plus. 37.8 must equal to 6 times acceleration in the x direction. That's my first equation. We come up to this one. I got minus F23 plus F63 plus 18.90 is equal to 3 times acceleration of x. I do the same thing here. I got minus 2.25 plus F 3 slash 2 plus 12.60 is equal to 2 AX. Recommendation here is take your time when you're doing these equations. You gotta get the signs right because if you mess up one sign the whole thing is going to fall apart. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these bottom two and see if we can combine them. Because what I'm looking at, when I look at this, what I see is I'm going to try to solve, if I add, well actually, if I add these two together, I can eliminate F32 and have an equation of F63. So watch me do this one. I'll take the first equation and I'll put minus F23 plus F. 6.3 plus 18.90 is equal to 3ax. All right, over here I'm going to put the F32 first. I have zero, I have no 6.3s. Now let's do this one and you combine those 12.6 minus 2.25 plus 10.35. I'll go ahead and add those together. Again, I'm going to lose these. That gives me 0 plus F63 plus 10.35 plus 18.9, Okay, so we'll solve for acceler. Actually, I'm going to solve for F63 here. It's an F63 going to equal to 5AX minus 29.25. Alright. What I want to do with that is I want to put that back into this equation here because we know 3, 6, and 6, 3 have the same magnitude, just opposite direction. And I'll get one equation that has nothing but AX in it. So I do that over here. So I'm going to do minus. Now instead of doing 3, 6, I'm going to put in what I had here. And I recommend you put that in parentheses. Okay, we'll simplify or distribute. Add 5x to both sides, that gives me 11ax is equal to 29.25 plus 37.8. That gives me 67.05. We'll solve for a6, ax, so it divides 67.05 by 11. That gives us acceleration of about 6.10.
and that would be meters per second squared. All right, so we have an acceleration. Let's go ahead and start plugging in, and we can get the forces between. So I can use this equation right here, put this back in, and find out what F63 is going to be. So F63 is going to equal to 5 times 6.10 minus 29.25. So 6.10 times 5 minus 29.25 gives me a value of 1.25. So the force is not very much. I'll do this. Okay, so we got that one. All right, so let's check off as we go. So we have this done already. We have this done already. So now we need to get 2, 3. Um, we can go back. The easiest way to get 2, 3 would be really just go back to this last equation right here. I'm going to grab it right here. Let's see if I can, see if I can grab this part right here. Okay, we got it. I'll just paste it right here. Okay, so now we substitute back in. So I'm going to add the negative, negative 2.25 plus 12.60. That gives me 10.35. So I got 10.35 plus F of 3, 2 is equal to 2 times 6.10. So I take 2 times 6.10 minus 10.35. That gives me the force, the 3 on the 2, is equal to 1.85 newtons, which is also equal to the force, the 2 under the 3. Right, and that's how you get the interacting forces between the two objects. So here I got acceleration, I got the forces between. Now, if you want, and I recommend this, is to go back and validate that your acceleration is right. And an easy way to do that problem, this problem, is to think about this whole thing as a system. And you could have done this from, actually, f f when you start this problem, you could do this just like this, and it's probably a faster way, but this is a more methodical way to work down and I think you learn more by going through this step at least once. Here what is the total mass? I got a 6, a 3, that's 9 plus so I have 11 kilograms. My total mass is 11 kilograms. So all we're going to do is we're going to do summation of forces in the x is equal to mass times acceleration in the x. That's all we're doing here. So I'll sum up the forces. So the forces I would have coming down I'd have the 37.8 here, I'd have 18.9 here, I'd have 12.6 here, and the only other one I going, going back up is going to be this frictional force right here. So I'll start out with minus 2.25 plus the force is going down 37.8 plus 18.9 plus 12.6. That gives me 67.05. So my summation of forces is 67.05. That better equal to 11 times acceleration of the x. We take that, divide by 11, and I get a value of exactly what we got doing it. The, the long approach, or the methodical approach, And again, that gave me exactly the same value here. And what you could do too, if you're unsure about what the forces are between, take what the acceleration you have right here, put it right back into here, and you can solve for F636, and you should get the values that we have. All right, I hope this approach um, worked. I hope this video was useful. Again, just be really methodical. If you, you, you cannot make a mistake on the signs as you set this up, again, the whole thing will fall apart if you do. And then again, you can check it as an entire system to make sure your, what your answers that you have are correct. All right, best of luck.